Hey guys, it's Happy Angel. Welcome back to the channel. And the long wait is over. We finally get to play with the Floatiac, the Quest Kodi Dea Kodiak 100 Amphibian. Now, oh, I still got my Ukrainian tail number on the aircraft. Oh well, we'll go with that. So the Kodiak, of course, is from Simwork Studios. Now we've already seen the wheeled version. This is let's call it version 2.0. Now, there is an update for the wheeled version, and we'll be seeing that on the channel in the next week or so. But I wanted to show you guys today my favourite of the variants, and kind of one of my favourite variants of aircraft in general, the Amphibian. I love water. Seaplanes are great. Amphibians are awesome. Now, this one is fantastic. We've got a lot of power, being a turboprop, and a lot of utility in this being a bush aircraft. Modern instrumentation and an advanced system aquatic capable aircraft it's a really really useful and unique skill set here that we have of course things like the uh the caravan on floats is another option on there we have things like the uh, twin otter of course the beaver and the uh, otter turbine variants as well do a similar role yes but this is one of the few that's more modern and more advanced and very much a cutting edge aircraft now, less rubbish I'm talking about here. I will talk through some of the features in it once we get inside this thing. But now, pricing is 15 euros at Simworks Studios website. It will be slightly more elsewhere, depending on where you buy it from. Now, if you already have the, the wheeled version, you should get a discount, uh, as long as the third-party stores support that. Uh, so, if you already have that, you can get a version which is an add-on to the wheeled version. You can also buy it for the same 15 euro price as an individual aircraft on its own right. Now, this comes with a ton of liveries, same as the wheeled version. As you can see here, there are lots. And there are different cabin variants. So we have cargo, we have passengers and cargo, and we have a more kind of luxurious interior. Less fluff, let's go look at aeroplane. Here we are. Okay, so we're in a fuel box area, so that's not a big deal. Now, I will use my controller at some point, but there's not a ton to see on the outside here we haven't already seen. We have the aeroset floats. Beautiful detailing on those. In fact, one second... Now, I remember there being a bug with my controller where sometimes the plane won't respond or move properly. So we'll use the controller. It's smoother, but only a little bit. There we go. Oh, hello. Look at the detail here on the... Uh, yeah, this is my controller moving. I'm just... I hate the pan camera. It's useful, but it's never smooth for me. Detailing here on the actual forward legs. Obviously, gravel and very unimproved runway is not a good idea for an amphibian. You can, you can break those. They're not exactly super strong. But we've got all the bracing here under the fuselage. The steps here on the side, of course, to the pilot's door. We have got areas to access here at the back for the cargo and passenger doors. And, of course, we have the weather radar on the wing, as usual. The aircraft's pretty tall here, of course, when it's on the wheeled floats, but not a huge impediment, really. In many cases, it's about the same height as an average amphibian would be in this sort of condition, so... All right, control it down. Let's go inside the airplane and take a look around. Now, the big addition here is, of course, this panel here, which is our gear status enunciator. It will annoy you soon. And we have a pedestal down here, which is our landing gear, our water rudder and emergency gear hand pump. That does not function because it's never going to fail. But all these other parts do. So without further ado... Runway landing. Gear is down for runway landing. Yes, thank you very much. Be quiet. Told you that'll annoy us soon. Okay, so systems are booting up here. We'll get this off here. We'll get our fuel pumps too high. We'll get our fuel shutoffs open. Now, I will leave this on for now because this used to have a huge FPS impact with the way the gauge was written. With this newer version, it doesn't have an impact, as far as I can tell. I've flown with it on and off, and I see no difference. The FPS is good. Could be a perk of Sim Update 10. I'm not 100% sure. So let's get ourselves configured here, ready for departure. Up there, I'll keep our prop back here. We'll go to... Which instrument am I going for here? That's the one we wanted. Low idle. We are good to go there. So ignition on and start on. Our tow brakes are engaged. ITT is looking good. NG is good. Fuel introduced. And boom, we have ignition. 
Sounds are one of the things I love in this aircraft. Also, cup holder. I also love cup holder. I want coffee cup, but I love cup holder. Storm window. Sounds do work. And the door with this version, as you remember, is two stage. You can click and open it. That's just that sound of the wind actually blowing past the door. That actually sounds realistic for once. Not just increased noise, but it actually sounds like it's windy. Latch the door there. Pity I can't set up the fire extinguisher, but there you go. Okay. Stand by. On. Everything's looking good here. This is our manual override, of course. But trim here, we now have a white marking. This should be indicated on here. Doesn't support it yet, but for now we actually at least have a zero trim position there. Let's make sure we have our takeoff trim set for us. We take off from land, so we're looking for about 50% on our rudder trim to the left, which gives us about 12.5. So we'll roll with, yeah, 12.3. Close enough for government work. Okay, so low motor and we're good there. In fact, we can go to off, actually, in this instance. Engine in at normal. And I'm not sure what that means, but I'm sure I'll work it out and get yelled at. By the way, the Vensor function, which is one of those nice things about this aircraft. General texturing and detail... Okay, I, the one thing I'm not a huge fan of there is that that has only really got different click modes. It's not draggable, which would be nice, of course, but not the end of the world. Lock our shoulder harness is important there. A little bit of a drag in FPS. I wonder if that is going to affect us. So this will be down here. I don't see a ton of difference, but we'll flow it off. We'll put it on when we're in the air. Okay. Let's go backwards, shall we? we? Need to get out of this parking position. important to idle rather than to apply actual forward power otherwise we might end up in a bit of a rough situation and call tipping over let's make sure this is all set here let's get my head engaged for us now get our flaps set for departure here we're taking off from Bora Bora today November Tango Tango Bravo also today is a great day a sad day and a great day uh, Doncaster Sheffield Airport is closing Sad because it's my local air proper airport. Uh, sad because the Vulcan is still there. Hopefully they'll get themselves a temporary airworthiness certificate to fly her out to a new home. Or if they find a new home, because it's going to become a business park, as many airports unfortunately do. The good news is, no more Class C flying out of Netherthorpe. Yeah. Pilots will get that. When your airport is right on the edge of a control zone. <laughs> yeah, it's never pleasant. So, lack of uh, the Class C right at the uh, edge of the traffic pattern of Netherthorpe will be delightful. Small mercies, I guess, in the world of aviation. No airport closing is a good thing, but with, of course, the post-COVID shrinkage, it's definitely changed things. So, we're going to taxi back here on the runway before we turn around and depart. A little bit of rudder trim here is important with this aircraft to make sure we actually counteract the torque. We'll get ourselves ready. Hopefully the governor will catch. We'll just do a run up here and let that do exactly what it wants to do. More than enough runway. Now this aircraft does have about 8% uh, slower climb and cruise. Or slower climb performance and takeoff performance in general. And 8% worse cruise speed. Because you're dragging around a big pair of clown shoes underneath you. That is a factor. It's always going to be more drag. Okay. Flight ready conditions here. I'm going to bring it up to RPM. Okay, feeling good there. And we're away. Let's go. Governor should actually uh, behave itself now. We're rolling here, got over 45 knots. Now, of course, the one downside of amphibians and float planes in general with this sim is that water in flight sim is very much lacking. Gear is unsafe. Check gear. 
Oh, my gear still set us up, so it's pulling up now. Yep. Okay, my gear was actually selected up even though it was down. When I was on the ground there, obviously my gear handle was up from the last stage in the sim. Meaning that, uh, yeah, so it came up the second I left the ground. Lucky I caught that one. Problem with the disconnect between the gear lever position in flight sim and the gear lever position on your third party controls. There's the, uh, the cabins around Bora Bora. Now, of course, we do have, speaking of sinking, an act actual angular attack indicator which is very useful to have in a bush plane. It'll let us know the actual behavior of the aircraft through the air. Let's pull back our power here. Climb up past the headland above us there. So now, like I said, obviously you're going to be a little bit slower when you're dealing with that kind of uh, system and uh, behavior. However, the water is where this shines. Unfortunately, it doesn't shine well enough because the water in this simulator is terrible. Let's be honest. Uh, wish it was better. Hopefully it will be. They've talked about Sim Update 11 having improvements for water. Whether that actually comes true or not is another factor entirely. What I hope it does, but we'll have to see. Because I have no idea whether or not it will. I will hold my... I'll hold my fingers crossed. I'll hold my breath. I won't hold my breath. That's the statement. I keep looking for the right phrase to use here and I never find the right one. Now, going back to full... Uh, fly to idle in this will drop you like a brick so you always want to have some power on don't we're going to do a water landing a water departure sink. Don't and then sink. we will do a don't don't land sink. landing don't don't sink. i'm don't not sinking this don't is intentional speaking of which uh what did i just pull out okay there we go uh see no real fps difference that i can tell Okay, power's coming back. Put one stage of flaps in here. We'll head back along the line of uh, cabins there. See what I mean about it dropping out of the sky a little bit? Reportedly accurate to the Kodiak. It's a little bit sluggish sometimes, but we'll be okay. There we go, nicely down. Little bit of the hopping, but not as bad as it could be. I'm gonna hold my controls all the way back here. Keep the prow of the floats out of the water. You definitely wanna come in with a lot more power than you think you do, because that was only one stage of flaps. It gets draggy fast. So speaking of which, do we have enough room ahead of us? We need about 1800 feet safely to get out of here. That should give us exactly that. So we're going to stay on the one stage of floats, actually, uh, before we go any further. Excuse me. Water rudders allow us to rudder in the water. Those, of course, being animated at the back of the aircraft. Water rudders. How does she sit in the water, actually? That's a good point. Really well, actually. Okay, let's uh, retract those. I feel like my seat's quite low down in this aircraft today. We're getting a bit of rudder authority there from the wind. So we're expecting to be able to rotate around uh, 50 to 60. We'll probably give it a little bit longer than that, but we're expecting to be able to get on the step about 40, 50. So we're going to power on here. Counteract a bit of that rudder. I haven't taken the rudder trim out. Probably should have done, but we should be okay. Hold the controls all the way back. We're going to get some of our skipping. It's kind of almost an expected thing in this sim, sadly. Ease the controls forward. Build speed here. Climb away. No trouble whatsoever. Keep my attitude correct here as we climb out. No problem. Speed's building. We'll let the nose down a little bit. go. I'm actually going to neutralize that trim. The downside of like real life where I can actually watch it on the screen and or do it whilst looking out the windows is not here. So I'm going to have to hopefully keep my eyes on things as we go. Okay, Don't so our airport's see. over there. So we're going to pull some power back here. We're going to put our gear down. We've got our flap 
down. That's fine. Gear is down for runway landing. Yes, thank you very much. Runway landing. Why does it do this? Well, it does this because it wants to make sure you have the right configuration. Whilst landing with your gear up on a runway is an expensive mistake. That's some wrecked floats. You'll slide, so you'll be fine. Gear down when you're landing on water will kill you. That's flipped many a float plane. And flipping a float plane into the water whilst landing is usually a recipe for dying. So we don't want to do that. So we're configured for our landing approach here into Bora Bora once again. Shouldn't be too difficult here. Uh, just keep don't more don't power on it. than you think you need. Again, the floats are very draggy. And that's one of the differences between this and other float planes I've flown in this sim. You could feel the drag off the floats very significantly. There's a lot of drag off these floats. I mean, they're big. They're sticking in the airflow. It's going to cause drag. A lot of other aircraft fly like the wheeled version, but with more bulk. This feels like the weighting is very different to the regular Kodiak. Okay, we're off center a little bit there. Let's guide her back in. You want to make sure you're touching down quite gently as well on these kind of floats. You don't want to make a mess of them. Just correct our angle of attack here. We're looking good at the moment. Just don't want to be too harsh with our touchdown. It was enough to round out. A little bit of a flare in a moment. Oh. Okay. Smooth enough. We'll take that. We will take that for sure. Power back to idle here. Put some brakes on. We've got the taxiway turn off coming up here. Again, my performance with that uh, backup instrument on versus off was not very different. Uh, the sim apparently doesn't like me much today, so I think that's more of a factor. But in general, along with the Big Radial's Goose, probably one of the most realistic uh, amphibian aircraft we have. Now, the Big Radial's Goose is probably the only amphibian in this entire sim that flies really well on the water. And I wonder if that's the difference between how contact points work in a simulator with a flying boat hull, which has 16 contact points on the hull alone, versus a, an amphibian, which obviously has the floats down below the aircraft. I don't know. The water physics are very strange in this sim. It's essentially boggy ground, I guess, is the best way to describe it. It does not behave like actual water. So, it is hard to say. There we go. Let's put the parking brake on. It is hard to say, but we know the water isn't correct. That's a factor there. But in terms of every other element of this aircraft, it's very realistic. I really enjoy it. And the looks are stunning. It is a beauty to behold. And it's quick enough. And the sounds, as always, with this aircraft are phenomenal. And as we already know, Simwork Studios do a lot of work in the back end in terms of how the aircraft will actually operate and behave. Its systems are good. The wheeled version of this aircraft is a fan favourite. It's probably one of the most bought add-ons that exists for this kind of aircraft. A lot of people really sing its praises. They hold it as one of the top add-ons out there. I do not think that anyone who buys this will be disappointed in that regard. If you like the original Kodiak, you will like this. It feels the same. It feels better. One thing I didn't mention, of course, is that there is now engine fatigue and weathering in there, so overuse of the starter can degrade its lifespan over time. This percentage factors at play and, you know, actual 35, 3600 hour kind of engine fatigue factors will play into it. It's interesting in terms of how that will work. Obviously, there's no other more complex systems, but it will do things that degrade the starter. Obviously, restart the flight can reset that or change in the flight, sorry, I should say will reset that element. You can hot start as well. You can catch your engine on fire. <laughs> it has systems, but they are very much more in the background rather than something that's in the hugely foreground. For the price, for the quality, fantastic. Again, we will see the wheeled version later on on the channel, which has had its own updates. I'm excited to try that too. It's an aircraft I definitely love myself. I am pleased. We had delays with some update 10. We had delays with other factors, but they have not disappointed. Totally recommend. Go out and get it. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.